Hello, today is Friday, January 8th, 2021. I'm Joe Schmidt from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. Each year, the lawyers from LB3 and consultants from TC2 contemplate what ICT trends are going to have an impact on enterprises in the year ahead. 2020 was a doozy, and we may have missed a few things, like the importance of UC for a completely remote workforce. Still, we've identified a number of trends for 2021, and over the next few months, we'll be covering the trends in several podcasts, and we'll also write a few articles that you can enjoy. On today's podcast, I'm joined by Laura McDonald and Kevin DeLallo, two of LB3's partners and colleagues of mine that helped pull this list together. We're going to give you a rundown of some of the topics that will be covered. Hey, Laura and Kevin, thanks for joining me on this first podcast of 2021. So, Laura, what is on our radar? Ah, Thanks, Joe, and Happy New Year. It's great to be here today and to focus on what's to come in 2021. Not surprisingly, first, we'll be discussing COVID-19's impact on enterprise ICT needs. 2020 was quite a year. I don't need to tell you that. Not only did COVID-19 wreak havoc on our healthcare systems, it fundamentally changed the way that companies conduct business, not only in 2020, but for years to come. In a two-part podcast, we'll discuss COVID-19's impact and explain how to best manage your company's voice and data network's cost in this new environment and how to view changing spend and network needs in the context of your current and future contractual commitments. We'll also discuss how to address contract commitments in light of these operational changes and what to do if you find yourself in shortfall. Another obvious topic we have to cover are the national leadership changes in Washington. Enterprises will be impacted by the policy and leadership changes that come with a new administration and changes in Congress. They will also be impacted by the change in leadership at the five-member Federal Communications Commissions, the FCC. And we're talking musical chairs here, folks. The FCC leadership recently had a change when the Senate confirmed a Trump appointee. The chairman of the FCC is resigning. So President Biden will be appointing a new chair and another FCC commissioner. These changes will probably delay some of the regulatory activities, at least initially, but the commission's agenda for 2021 will inevitably include a number of telecom and tech issues of both financial and operational interest to enterprise users, including toll-free access reform, managing the skyrocketing universal service fund, which is almost 30 percent broadband expansion, 5G development, and the continuation of the net neutrality saga. So you want to stay tuned for those developments. Thanks, Laura. Those are two macro topics that will definitely impact just about every company. So Kevin, what's happening from a technology and services perspective? Hey, Joe, thanks for having me. Well, the market for managed network services is changing significantly, including in the areas of tooling, solutions, deal structures, and service providers. A lot of these changes are creating downward pricing pressure, which in turn is making it more attractive and affordable to outsource the management of your network infrastructure. To take the most advantage of all these changes, you need to understand who the major players will be in 2021, what the most important provider and solution attributes are for your business, and how to structure a flexible commercial deal that will facilitate rather than hinder continuous improvement over the term of your deal. Another technology that will stay hot and gain even more traction in 2021 is SD-WAN. SD-WAN has enabled internet-first strategies, and they've revolutionized wide-area networking by giving companies the increased flexibility that a cloud-centric world demands. With SD-WAN, it's possible to save money while enhancing capability and performance, but there are a number of risks, challenges, and competing choices to consider to get to that point. In our upcoming podcast, we'll address these and other considerations companies should keep in mind when figuring out how to leverage SD-WAN and the internet-first revolution in 2021. Thanks, Kevin. Laura, what are companies going to be doing to keep their expenses in check in 2021? Well, that's obviously a very important goal for all enterprises out there. And the use cases of telecom expense management, or TEM, services in 2021 are going to be a focal point. They've really matured. Enterprises' needs for TEM services continue to expand and evolve. 
No longer do you only need the basic of invoice receipt, processing payment, audit, inventory, and reporting for wireline and wireless services. But now you might need those same services and they're becoming available for a much broader range of network services such as maintenance, cloud-based services, Internet of Things services, and subscription-based services. So our annual TEM podcast will update you on how to best take advantage of the new TEM offerings in order to maximize savings. Hey, I don't know about you guys, but one of the things I usually do at the end of the year is refresh my technology. And I am having a gas with my new Samsung S20 5G smartphone. Yeah, well, the promise of 5G may finally come true in 2021, Joe, but not in the way many of us have imagined. None of the major wireless carriers has the resources to blanket the country or even large-scale metropolitan areas with true 5G coverage. But that hasn't deterred their marketing department's fog machines from spewing out futuristic visions of what could someday come to pass. Suffice to say that I'm not running out to purchase a 5G smartphone anytime soon. The real promise of 5G has nothing to do with traditional voice or data communications networks, but with private 5G and the Internet of Things. Mixing 5G speed and capacity with edge computing and cloud services makes for some pretty potent productivity. And when used as the primary or secondary communications link for an SD-WAN network, a 4G or 5G link becomes your business continuity insurance policy. Wireless connections also give companies the agility to morph quickly to adjust to changes in their own operations and customers' needs. Joe, we should also watch for private 5G campus-wide networks to elbow Wi-Fi out of the way in many large enterprise settings. The opportunities for large customers are truly endless. They just don't involve using a 5G smartphone on the street corner or in your car, at least not in 2021. So, Laura, our last podcast of 2020 covered the SolarWinds hack. And frankly, we covered a number of hacks and other privacy violations last year. Yes, and I hate to say that in 2021, security is going to have to be front and center once again. In 2021, the SolarWinds hack and similar security concerns will figure prominently in planning and procurement cycles, and it should. With the increasing incidence and sophistication of cyber attacks, all enterprises need to reevaluate their security systems, assess their networks, and possibly replace equipment and software to protect their production lines intellectual property, and customers. I know they've been doing that, but there's got to be renewed focus on it. The challenge will be finding money and already stretched budgets, working around existing contractual commitments, and facing a limited number of proficient incumbent suppliers. Ultimately, the responsibility of protecting networks and information assets rests with the enterprise. And since vendors who have the resources to backstop their promises and the dollars to satisfy claims insist on limiting their liability, and other vendors who might be willing to step up for better liability terms don't have the assets, that's going to be tricky for the enterprise users. So taking into account that even businesses who are in the business of securing their own network are vulnerable to foul play, all enterprises are going to have to be vigilant and will be discussing that. I also want to bring, Joe, up something else that's going to be really important for enterprises in 2021, E911. Regulations that the SEC adopted in 2018 regarding E911 will begin to take effect this year, and they will have a direct impact on business. Beginning this month, companies will need to transmit certain types of location information with 911 calls that originate from certain types of on-premise equipment. Within a year, those requirements will expand to include a broader set of non-fixed end-user devices and eventually to all types of equipment. In 2021, this is going to require that companies understand what their compliance obligations are, develop their E911 roadmaps in coordination with their developing network, and start implementing their E911 solutions to ensure that they meet these new requirements and limit their liability. So be on the lookout for an upcoming podcast that will cover all of these issues and help bring you up to speed on what you need to be looking at and thinking about and doing in 2021. So, Joe, another trend we're going to cover is how the contract financial model is evolving for network services. As enterprise customers' technology needs have evolved, vendors' contracts have also changed. Some say to meet their customers' needs, 
Others may say to take advantage of their customers. In any case, the trend from private network topologies to internet-based solutions has ushered in a shift from revenue commitment-based contracts to deals based on minimum service terms for individual circuits or other service elements. It's important for enterprise customers to understand the implications of this trend. On the upside, individual circuit terms may provide flexibility on a site-by-site basis, assuming the minimum term periods are short enough. But contract governance may be more complex. And hard-fought terms and conditions you negotiated to soften the impact of revenue commitments may become useless in a circuit term environment, as providers argue that circuit terms and revenue commitments are different animals. In the new environment, customers will need different forms of protection from minimum term commitments to minimize financial and operational risks. Tune into our upcoming podcast to learn what you need to know before your next contract renewal or RFP. All right, great stuff. Thanks, Kevin, and thank you as well, Laura. Now, these trends and a few others are going to make for some great podcasts. So stay tuned as we start cranking out the podcast starting next week. And as always, the lawyers of LB3 and the consultants of TC2, we're here to help with any of your ICT needs. So please contact us if you have something that you'd like to discuss. You can also stay current by subscribing to these Staying Connected podcasts, checking out our websites, or by following us on LinkedIn.